So there's this Savage Worlds version of riffs out now. No, and... absolutely not. Oh, come on, you don't even know what I was going to ask. A thousand times no. We've done riffs enough, haven't we? All right, fine. Let's do this instead. What's that? It's a Japanese RPG based on a variety of anime tropes, kabuki theater, and folklore tradition. It's a diverse setting that tackles many genres with an everything but the kitchen sink and what the hell the kitchen sink as well approach to character options. Ooh, neat! Let's do that! Uh, you know, that sounds an awful lot like... Japanese stealth riffs? Yeah! Suck it, nerds! Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where this is Tenra Bancho Zero! Wow, Tenra Banjo Zero is gonna be hard to summarize. This game big! And we just came off of Exalted. Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? Tenra is based heavily on a Taoist-ruled Sengoku Jidai Japan, where humans migrated from parts unknown to an alien world on a spaceship. Holy bananas, are we confused yet? The world is made up of powerful states run by feuding warlords, each supported and pitted against each other by an elite class of priests. These priests reward favor with gifts of mystical computers that make use of Tenra's ambient field of spiritual energy. These computers allow the implementation and control of giant war machines piloted either as Waldos or by placing a person's soul in their magical motherboard. They also employ men and women who have had their body parts replaced with crude diesel punk mechanica and magic wielding on Miyoji who summon monsters born of their own genius and given life by Tenra's ambient spiritual nature. Are you starting to see the comparison to Rifts? There is a lot to unpack in this game. Well, buckle up, sweet child, because we are not even halfway done yet. Outside of the government, there are the Mushisukai, people who have learned to live in sync with the strange insect-like fauna of Tenra to the point where they bond with them physically, borrowing their strength as symbiotic hive organisms. There are the mystical Oni, the native people of Tenra, there are powerful psychics able to resonate with the planet's natural spiritual energy in order to change their environment in fantastic ways. They grow in their chest a heart crystal that is used by humans to power their giant war mechs, a fact for which they are hunted and murdered in their own lands. There are samurai and ninja, that's to be expected, but if you think we're getting off easy, don't. They are not what you think. Both are people who have grafted mystical gems into their bodies and been bound with spirits in order to suffuse them with the ability to summon secret magics. The samurai even get to power up to a stronger form if they need more strength to win a battle. At this point, I'm struggling to remember if we've left anything out. Oh, we have the Kugutsu, magical dolls given true life by master craftsmen. They can invade people's minds, and owning one is so prestigious that entire wars have been fought over it. There are various traditions of Buddhist and Shinto monks, each possessed of incredible techniques and disciplines. And of course, there are the Taoist priests themselves, who are mystical holy men trained to operate as a network of spies, shoring up the power of the temples and cementing their control of Tenra from the shadows. This isn't even scratching the long, long history and incredible amount of detail presented in the core books, which, by the way, is extensive. It's also not mentioning the fact that almost everything we mentioned above can be mixed and matched, allowing for an extraordinary well of character possibility. The engine is, despite all that complexity, fairly simple. Attributes are rated 1 through 10, with each representing a d6. Skills are rated 1 through 5. Checks are made by rolling your dice pool and looking for results that come up equal to or less than your skill rating. As such, you want to roll low in TBZ. Difficulty determines the number of successes needed, usually one or two, but extraordinarily difficult tasks might be as high as six. Combat is fast and brutal, but interestingly survivable. Notably, every parry has the chance to be a counterattack. Evasions don't have this quality, but any defense using unarmed or melee will strike back against a foe if you score more successes than they. Damage is taken in one of two ways. The player may assign incoming damage vitality, which represents the character's energy and endurance, or wounds, which represent the character's physical condition. They take longer to heal, but unlike most engines, provide bonuses rather than penalties. This is in line with the game's anime aesthetic, and heroes can expect the opportunity to come back from a savage beating with renewed will to win. The final wound is called the dead box, and it's a horse of a different color. Vitality, when depleted, causes the character to fall unconscious or to be in some other way out of the fight, never dead. In this case, failure is considered enough of a penalty for defeat. 
you can take a buttload of vitality damage and still wake up from it. Even going into negatives isn't fatal. However, if the dead box is checked, the player has signaled to the GM that this is one of the series' pivotal scenes. This is the hill she is willing to die on. It is glory or death. In this case, running out of vitality results in the character being sent to another dimension. Another major element of the game is table entertainment. Like Kabuki, the audience is expected to let the performers know when they're excited or impressed. This is accomplished with Aiki Chits, a resource that players are allowed to give to each other when someone does something cool. Aiki Chits can be spent to dramatically add an absent character to the scene, gain a point of ki, or activate a trait called Fates. Fates are emotions, goals, and beliefs that, when rolled, can generate ki. Ki can be spent to boost die rolls, temporarily increase skill ranks, add successes, take additional actions, interrupt NPCs, protect other characters, find new equipment, or, like experience, to gain permanent attributes or skill increases if you spend it like gangbusters. Am I the only one who feels like this is basically Ninja Scroll the game? I would agree with that if I could remember the plot of Ninja Scroll. I know we just watched it, mm. but it went over... I, <laughs> I can't focus. It's you, just not engaging. You don't need to know the <laughs> plot of Ninja Scroll. No. It's like someone decided to make Japan is Weird the RPG. I don't know about Japan to is me. Weird. It's just like a whole bunch of um, cool anime tropes. This game is very early... 90s, late 80s anime. I will, I'll, yeah, I'll go along with that. Like, that dude it's, looks like he walks straight out of Bao. Does look like he walks straight out of Bao. <laughs> Did you know that Bao is the first manga written by the guy who writes JoJo's Bizarre Adventure now? It's It's got everything. It's got samurais and ninjas. I mean, yes, they're different, but it's got samurais and ninjas, and it's got, um... It's got bugs. It has bugs. People with bugs living it's in them. It's got mechs and Summoners. people with it's got freaking mechs. mechanical limbs and stuff. It's got mechs, and more importantly, it has little kids driving mechs. Yeah, little tiny baby mech I mean, murderers. It's, it's got hungry ghosts fed into magical cyber circuits and then plugged into a killing machine under control of someone else. It's So a Rusty Venture would be proud. Yeah, Rusty Venture would be proud. Kinda, yeah. It's surprising that they managed to make all of these different things more or less work. Although parts of the rule set I would cheerfully, I, I, I was saying earlier, I would cheerfully ignore. Um, I wanna, What I do want to say uh, about them making it work is this game does have that weird little thing where every character has its own character creation. It's all based off of the same core, you know, creation build. Yeah. But that's why that rule book is so thick. Yeah. Is they all have As their own power the sets. So. But the yeah. thing that is kind of cool about that is that you only need to learn one if you're playing that one. Fair. But it's one of those things where, like, each player is going to have their own moving parts to kind of figure out. Like, the, the Onmyoji is going to have to figure out the cheeky creation, the summoning system. and then Which like, is, when you get down to it, it comes out to be quite simple. Yeah, like, it well, takes a while is... to build your shiki, but you can have them set, you know, just like, I'm going to summon this one now. This is the yeah. one I'm making. They're all relatively What's simple. Up? I want to play, I want to play a summoner that is basically, like, Seto Kaiba. <laughs> 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 that is completely within the realm of possibility. Pretty much. Just yeah. can, I choose blue eyes, white dragon. You don't choose. That's Pokemon. But yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I play. <laughs> I summon, I summon the blue eyes white dragon in attack mode. <laughs> you totally can, um, though. Because that's one thing that's cool about this. I like their summoning system because you get to design your own summons. I feel like if you do that, you're required to yell out the names of your monster's attacks. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. Photon burst, burst of Destruction. <laughs> I will say there are aspects of this engine. One of them I'll bring up is the Emotional Matrix. Uh, yeah, I actually kind of just ignore that. It's too OSR for Yeah, me. I was going to say, I don't know what that is because it, in our games that we've played, we've just ignored it. It's literally <laughs> it's literally a thing where you roll a D66. You roll, you roll on a chart to determine the, re, uh, the initial emotional reaction or the initial attitude of a character. But the problem I have with this is that major NPCs and the player characters roll for their initial reactions. I'm not going to roll that at random. I don't know how I feel about karma. It's it's an intertwined system. The karma, Aiki chits, and the Without, ki points. The, the thing with is the ki is super awesome. Sure. Ki, I mean, they're so super awesome that they penalize you for using them. Well, that depends. <laughs> <laughs> what they do is they discourage you from using them if you have an insane amount of karma, which means you're insanely powerful anyway, and you probably don't actually need them. But if you have very low karma, you can spend them left and right. That allows you to make the glitter boy and still run next to the cyber dock and then both be on par. I think the thing, I think the part of it that really rubs me the wrong way is the hundred and if you reach a hundred and eight karma, you lose your character. I don't like that at all. And I don't like anything that says you just lose your character. 
I get that. I'm you just saying. You can also spend Ike chits as Kiai without gaining karma. That's true. Okay. Fair. I don't want to sound like I'm just completely defending it, because I wanted to run a game where characters were super anime cool and still could use the full system. So the very first thing I did was waive karma costs for anything other than permanent increases. Right. Which, the ki points are both cool bonuses you can use to do awesome things in-game. And the experience system. And its experience system. Yeah. Which is actually interesting and useful. And you are very yawny tonight, you poor thing. I do think the game would be better without it, but at the same yeah. time, it does level the playing field. Clearly, Ninja Scroll, the role-playing game, we have to keep the characters in check. <laughs> That's not in check, man. <laughs> Dude, do you have any idea how powerful a 90 Karma character is? I do, actually. I have my issues with the advancement mm -hmm. system and, you know, that whole interaction. Is worth it? Yeah. yeah. I feel the like game it's is worth a lot it. of fun. It's just, it's amazing to me how much, like I said, how much cool they packed into these little books. I think it runs about fifty dollars with the you know coming with the slipcase and the yeah and all that. By slipcase, I mean this is a really like high quality hard you know. Yeah, it's actually a yeah. really case. really yeah. nice. It tends to be a little more structured than a lot of games that yeah. we get in the West. Um, um, I've um, no, again, I noticed that that's a thing in Japanese games. They tend to be much it is. more sequence um, sequential. It also or might not, not like linear but structured. It also might have something to do with the sort of the emulation of, of uh, Kabuki. Yeah, that could be. Because don't they have sort of a structured acts and yeah. intermissions and such? I mean it actually advises X number of intermissions in a session to do some game maintenance stuff. Interestingly you can actually spend your experience during the game in those intermission periods. But it's <laughs> but it's fascinating to, to, to adventure in. Oh so it's, it's great. I it's love it. It's a cool it. game. That, that, like, I'll bring it around. Like, we, can, we can totally recommend this Oh game, yeah definitely. Like, 100%. Like, yeah. I absolutely love it so much. Lamentations of the Flame Princess wishes it had fantasy this dark. That's not true. It's, it totally it's, does. It does. But, but I would encourage people to kind of think long and hard about how to implement that, that interaction with karma costs and such. But your mileage may vary. But barring that, and maybe that emotional matrix thing, yeah. I can give this a solid recommendation. Absolutely. I think I think Definitely. it's really cool. I'd absolutely so, get this game. Solid recommendation for Tenro Bancho Zero. All right, so that's it for us. We might try to squeeze in another review. I don't know if we're going to have time to do it because of how late this one's coming out. Yeah. Um, if not, that review will come out next month, and hopefully with the one we had planned for next month, and that'll be a, you know, we'll have to. Uh, that happens from time to time. Right now, our good friends at The Dead Gentlemen are running a really cool Kickstarter for their property, mm -hmm. The Demon Hunters, which, if I understand Obviously, it correctly... Obviously, you know we love... We love the Demon Hunters. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there might be a little bit of a fan there. Uh, what they're doing is they're opening it up as a kind open of license. Creative Commons open license world where other people can contribute to the main canon. They have a Kickstarter running for how that's going to be databased and everything's going to be put together right now. Hmm. Recently, in other news, we uh, got to finally hang out with some super cool people at the Established Facts podcast, oh, which you can hear J uh, Jay and myself guest star on episodes 143 and 144. Yep. Well, 144 is not out yet. It's not out yet as of this recording, but... It may be out by the time it's <laughs> right. It may be out by the time people watch this. So, so if it's not out, it will be, uh, and you just got there too soon because time is ridiculous and this is YouTube. So pop over and give them a listen to. If just because we're there, I think you'll, you know, if that's something you need to go check them out. If not, it is a super cool podcast. It is one that I have enjoyed for a long time yeah. and have been trying to get people to go to on Twitter. Uh, they made us feel so much at home. They did. I what was, a cool group. What a cool group I, of people. I would love to, would love to some, work with them again. They're, yeah, absolutely. They're great people. Those are some awesome guys so. and girls. Maybe next time uh, we'll get Johnny Hardy on there. That is all I think that we have for you this week. And by this week, I mean this month. Oh, we're still working. <laughs> We are still going to do the Exalted uh, setting thing. Yes. That's a, that's a work in progress. That is, that is coming. That's a work in progress. And um, the next review should be another Japanese game called Ryutama. Yeah. I don't, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, but I tried. We'll see you then.